I wanted to make a small video giving you my four reasons why I think Pagan Online might be the game for you. This is not a sponsored video, I'm just really enjoying this game. I watched the dev blog from Madhead Games and the enthusiasm there is heartwarming. They're proud of what they've made so far and rightly so. Let's dive into my reasons for playing this game. Reason 1. The Story Pagan Online has this entire new world with its own lore, based on the Slavic paganism that existed before Christianity took over in Eastern Europe. You start off in the Pantheon, where the gods used to live. They don't live there anymore though. By tracking down the gods' champions, you discover the locations of the gods and slowly win them over to help you restore balance in the world. What the ultimate goal is remains to be seen because early access only allows us to play until Act 5. What we do know is that the story is told very well. The voice acting is definitely on par and the dialogue is well written. You freed me from the dark beyond the shroud. You have my eternal gratitude, but you must know. My connection to my patron, Dabor, has been severed. The gods each have their own characteristics, with Dabok being the serious, conscious guy who is concerned for the fate of the world. It creates a good contrast to his brother Velas, who is a joker pulling pranks all the time, which is also reflected in your conversations with him. Act 5 is about discovering Perun, the god of thunder, who according to the Slavic lore is an arch enemy of Velas. I'm curious to see how they incorporated that into the game. The gods don't only have their own personality, they also inhabit different parts of the world. You travel from snowy mountains to green forest areas to dry deserts, all in an attempt to reunite the gods in the Pantheon. Besides the gods, you encounter various NPCs who help you during your journey. Once freed from their struggles, they join you in the Pantheon as artisans, unlocking new features like crafting, hunting and new abilities to use. Reason 2. The Combat Pagan Online has deliberately slow paced combat compared to other action RPGs, where complete builds and Path of Exile are designed in such a way that you can blaze through levels clearing maps in 4 minutes, mechanics like this don't exist in Pagan Online. In this game the combat is much more stage driven, taking on a new batch of enemies every time. By pressing M you open up the map and you can see where enemy encounters are found. Once engaged in combat, it's a matter of dodging attacks, using your skills and abilities wisely and make sure you don't burn through your potions. That's particularly important because you don't regenerate health in this game. All this makes the combat much more skill focused, which also means that gear and builds play a less important role. You still require decent gear or you won't do any damage, but the most important thing in battle is that you avoid damage as much as possible and dodge the enemy skill shots. If you don't, even heavily armored characters can be overrun by enemies and be murdered almost instantly. To kill enemies, you can make use of various interactive elements in the zones as well. They can be shrines that give you a temporary buff or fireworks that blow up your foes. The boss fights deserve a special mention here. Madhead Games implemented some interesting mechanics during these boss fights, usually resulting in bosses being immune to damage unless you activate certain levers, kill specific mobs or play around boss mechanics otherwise. I'm not going to spoil them, but there's definitely some trial and error involved here, which is not something you see very often in action RPGs. Another component that keeps combat interesting are the episodic challenges that occur. During combat, you sometimes are presented with a challenge such as don't use a health potion during this encounter. It's a nice change and offers a bit of variety in between the different encounters. Also at the start of most levels a battle chest spawns which locks after a set amount of time. If you are able to reach the chest and kill the enemies surrounding it, you can claim the loot. If the timer runs out before you get there, the chest is locked forever. And the game doesn't hesitate mentioning it to you either. Reason 3. The amount of content. Pagan Online already has a lot to offer. This is one of the most interesting early access games I've played so far, and also one of the most complete ones. A significant part of the campaign is playable, 5 out of 8 acts. It took me around 15 to 20 hours to complete those 5 acts. Apart from the campaign mission, there are a few side missions, patrol, defense, exploration and survival. 
These missions require a certain gear score, a certain level, and depending on the difficulty setting you choose, they can be really challenging, but also very rewarding. The side missions are primarily used to get materials and blueprints for crafting, and currently, they're also the only way to level your character after, let's say, roughly level 30. They are also a great source of keys, which unlock areas with targets you can kill in assassination missions. Assassination missions have similar requirements to the side missions, but also force you to have completed various hunts. Hunts are yet a separate piece of content, which are basically bounties you can complete by killing certain enemies. If you have met all the prerequisites to start the assassination and manage to execute the target, you receive hero shards. These can in turn be used to unlock new heroes to play with. New heroes offer new gameplay possibilities, because they all have their own equipment and abilities. Unlocking and leveling all the heroes will take a while, that's for sure. You are incentivized to do so, however, because every time you level up your hero, you also increase your legacy level. Legacy is yet another component of Pagan Online and basically represents your account level. The higher it is, the better your loot drops and the more bonus experience your lower level heroes receive. This way, it's not a major grind every time you unlock a new character, because with high legacy, leveling your new tune is pretty fast. Apart from the combat, missions and heroes, the game has an already very decent crafting system. Crafting requires a blueprint, some crafting materials and the base item of the piece of gear you want to craft. If you have all three, you can craft a new piece of gear. It's a great way to upgrade your character. During the crafting process, you receive crafting experience. There's also small crafting quests that increase your experience even further. Higher crafting levels result in more random rolls being added to your gear, allowing you to craft some pretty insane items. There's also unique legendary gear which can be crafted, which provides its own unique bonuses. All in all, quite some content to sink your teeth into. Reason 4. Value This game just launched in early access, but with all the previous reasons combined, it's definitely worth the money. The game already offers more content than your average AAA full game these days, which says more about the gaming industry maybe than about this game. Regardless though, developers who bring something like this to early access, like Pagan Online, a game that's fun to play with no game breaking bugs, they deserve some praise and attention. Especially in the case of Madhead Games, a studio that has no experience in the action RPG genre, but clearly loves it very much. It's great to see a passion project come to life and it is currently in a very good state. Is the game perfect? Nah, there's definitely a few issues, some of which I've addressed in another video, check the card. There's of course also balancing issues and some bugs, some server lag, but it's nothing that cannot be patched, and at its core, Pagan Online has a very solid foundation that can be built upon. That's vital because games like Anthem or Fallout 76 completely lack a solid foundation, and we've all seen what happens then. Is this franchise going to take over the action RPG market? It definitely needs a lot of work for that to happen, but it has potential. It could though, because there's a clear vision for this game and I'm hoping Pagan Online will do very well in the future. Even if it doesn't, for whatever reason, I won't be regretting my purchase. I've got my money's worth out of this already, spending around 30 hours with the game up until this point. If it seems fun to you, I can really recommend it for the 27 bucks they're charging currently. These were my 4 reasons why I think you should be playing this game, which are the story, the combat, the content and the value. I hope you enjoyed the video, throw me a like or sub if you did, because I'm planning to make a lot more content about Pagan Online. I'll see you all next time, bye bye.